This is Eric Ray with Ray Forensics. This video covers how to install and use Actions for Adobe Photoshop to make the analysis, markup, and comparisons of latent prints easier. Glenn Langenberg published a paper in 2011 describing the use of gyro for latent print comparisons. Green, yellow, and red are used to indicate your confidence in the true presence of minutia. Orange is used to mark minutia that are only seen by the examiner after first looking at the known exemplars. While many agencies and examiners have started using this system to mark their minutia, many others do not because it just takes extra time to change the color every time you add a point. You can see going back and forth, marking up minutia with these different colors, it takes time to go all the way over to the color palette and switch the colors. Now, an examiner might start by marking off all the green ones, but each time the color needs to be changed, you have to move the mouse all the way over to the color palette. For difficult minutia, an examiner might take a few minutes to find the exact location that the minutia should be placed. Unfortunately, the examiner will probably need to change the minutia color. When they come back to the place they want to place the minutia, since their eyes left that place, they're going to have to find that exact location to put down the minutia once again. So these gyro actions help solve these problems and a few other problems that arise when using Photoshop to compare latent prints. So let's start over. First, to set up these actions, go down to the link below in the description of this video and download the gyro.atn file. So store it someplace convenient and then open up Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop CC 2017. If you're using an older version, then you may need to contact me for an action file specific to your version. So then click Windows and make sure the Actions menu is checked on. Come over to the Actions uh, window over here and click on these three lines. Then click Load Actions, select the gyro.atn file that you downloaded, and then click Load. Now you're ready to mark up your latent. So now I've made a few additional uh, ad adaptations to my Photoshop to uh, help me compare fingerprints. So some of the buttons that I'm going to tell you to press are slightly different than what I'm going to be pressing. And you can see the buttons that I'm pressing down here uh, from the clicks and also the keyboard um, buttons. So first, the latent print image that you're using should be in a color mode, not in grayscale. Then, once you're ready to start using it, you're going to start off by pushing the F4 button. That's going to create a whole bunch of layers over here in the layers menu. And it's also going to start off by having the enhancement layer uh, highlighted and on and uh, ready to use. So now you can make uh, enhancements to this layer, maybe changing the levels a little bit. But the underlying original image in the background is going to remain unchanged. Uh, and uh, so you can do any kind of enhancements without worrying about permanently changing what the original image looks like. Now we're ready to start placing minutia. So just press the F5 button to get a green point, F6 for yellow, F7 for red, and F8 for orange. So I'll push the button and click, push the button and click, and you can see how very quickly I can go through marking out many minutia without ever having to look away over here to the color palette or having to look anywhere other than at the minutia at the ridges where our eyes should be looking so you press a key and place a point press another key even if it's the same color and make another point have your fingers poised over those f5 6 7 and 8 keys keep your eyes focused on the fingerprint and you can quickly add in minutia now one of the big drawbacks of using Photoshop for latent print comparisons is that you can't move a point once you've placed it. Instead, you have to switch tools to the eraser tool. Make sure you remember to create a new layer for your points. Erase the 
minutia that you placed and then go switch back to the pencil tool or paint brush tool and place the point again. So uh, one of the benefits here is that we don't have to do that anymore. All you need to do is press the V button on your keyboard, then click on the minutia and you can move it around. For example, press V. If you're like, oh, I think this is more of an ending, you can move it there. V and then take this one. Maybe you think it's more of a bifurcation and move it here. Or if this one should be down here instead, you can easily move the points to where you think they actually do belong. Now, after all of your minutia are placed, and I know there's more that I could mark out, it's important to save as this image as an analysis version of the latent print so that as any changes that you make during the comparison phase of moving points or adding in new points when it's side by side with the exemplar you still have this original version saved uh, so that you can go back and reference and double check to see how many of the points you had to move delete or add in now we're going to bring up the exemplar print for this example they're both in the same image file but if you have the exemplar in a separate file you'll need to when that's selected press the f4 key again to set up all of these layers for that file as well now we can begin placing minutia on the exemplar again press the f5 key for green and then you can start putting these points down see it goes very quickly right here you notice that this is marked as an ending but over here it's marked as a bifurcation so easy enough just push the V key again and click and drag that down to here this again is an ending we can move it down here to be a bifurcation and then put in the bifurcation over here so that it corresponds now there may be points that you find during your comparison that you didn't mark during analysis. So press the F8 key and mark that point in orange. And then also you can do the same over here. Again, pushing the F8 key and marking it in orange. This indicates that you didn't see it and mark it during your analysis of the latent, but now you do see that they correspond. So you want to indicate that and orange is the way to do so. Now, it may be that you find a point like this red one here that's in a lot of uh, distortion area doesn't correspond to any minutia that's occurring over here in the exemplar. So an easy way to get rid of that is again push the V key, select the point that doesn't correspond, and simply hit the delete key and it goes away. Now finally, there's a few times when you may need to complete a thorough search of your latent and consider many different areas and locations through the exemplar. You may not have it so easy where they're side by side and facing the same orientation. And if there's a lot of points that you've marked up, it may become distracting to have so much uh, red or yellow uh, in the latent print that you're then having to kind of focus only on a few of the green ones for your search. So what you can do is come over here to the layers and just click on the eye next to red gyro and it takes off all the red points. Scroll up a little bit, take off all the yellow and even down here to take off all the orange. And now we can just focus on the green ones. Now there's even sometimes when you should go back and look not at the points that you've marked, but at the actual ridges again. Sometimes we can bias ourselves into where the minutia are occurring by where we put the point. And it can sometimes help to see the minutia again, see the ridges again without the points while doing a comparison. So you can just click off all the green ones too, and you have now this clean image that you can conduct comparison and a search throughout all of your exemplars. Or you can again, look with just the green minutia looking for that specific target group. Now, if you end up using these actions in your comparisons, uh, please let me know if they work for you and how they might improve your markup and your efficiency. You can email me, eric at rayforensics.com. Thank you very much.